All right, on page 424, we're going to talk about term life insurance. Now, one of the things that you have, or maybe you have it set up when you were uh, a kid, maybe your parents set up something for you for life insurance, and uh, when you were born, a lot of times their grandparents do that, uh, because it's relatively cheap at that time. Okay. Why do you have things like life insurance? So that when you're older, you can make more. If something happens to you, okay? If something happens to you, then you have that in there. For example, last week, there was a Max girl that got killed in a car accident. If she would have had life insurance, then the life insurance policy pays, pays out whatever they had for that. Uh, for instance, I have a $250,000 policy for, my, for me. So if something were to happen to me where I were to die, then therefore my beneficiaries, which are my wife and my kids, would get that money. Now what does that go for? That goes for paying off funeral expenses, all my debt, that kind of stuff. Does it go very far? 250000 nowadays? No, it does not. Most funerals, and I wish Mr. Berg was here because he actually does that on the side, um, where he could tell you how much it is. I'm guessing it's probably close to thirty to forty thousand dollars for that, because your casket and everything else that's involved in there. I bet you it's close to that. I'll find out from him tomorrow. Okay, but um, that's one of those things that costs money. Plus all the debt that you have acquired, whether it's in credit cards or loans of some sort, all that stuff could then eat that money very quickly. Plus, and that means that you don't have any more income coming in for the rest of your life, obviously, because you're, you're gone. So that's a couple things why you'd have life insurance. Uh, on page 424, <clears throat> hey, it says, when a main source of income of a family dies, what happens financially? For a family with children, it is a classic case of financial setback. So for instance, like I said, if, I, if something were to happen to me, then it'd be up to my wife and only her to then become the financial person of the, of the household. And me personally, I work two jobs in order to, to provide for what we have. So what, we, what I do all of a sudden goes away. And yeah, that would be a lot of a, a big setback. Life insurance, however, can soften the financial blow. This is a financial protection for the family in case of main source of income dies. Term life insurance is the least expensive form of life insurance that you can purchase. You buy term life insurance for a specified term, such as five years or to a specified age. Typically speaking on this, and I don't remember if mine are term or whole life, I think mine are whole life, but as far as the term stuff goes, if you were set up when you were born, there's a commercial out there that, has, that talks about Gerber life insurance, you know, the Gerber baby foods. They have life insurance stuff that you can buy for babies when they're brand new. You can then put like $10,000 on there and it costs very, very little. Okay? But that term would go to like they're 18. And then after that, then you would have to then purchase another type. Okay? So that's what they mean by term. Unless you renew your policy at the end of each term, the insurance coverage ends. The annual premium depends on your age at the time you buy the policy and the number of units. So for instance, right now, or when I initially bought my life insurance, okay, I was about 10 years younger than I am now, so it would cost less. As you age, insurance goes higher. Okay? Huh? Right. Good. In case something were to happen to you. But I'm saying that if you, when you get on on your own and you actually start having your own career, you're going to have to get it again. Buy it early because it's cheaper. What about the one that I already had? Is that just like don't buy uh, it? Depends on what kind it is. If it's a term life insurance, it usually ends at a specified age. So when you have it at seven, it might stop at twenty-five or something like that. Right, you can borrow against it. I've done that too, and uh, I had mine from when I was a when I was a kid too. I had to borrow against mine when I was in college. Yeah, you can definitely do that. Okay. 
than your than your um, like the beneficiaries of your estate, like in my case would be my wife and my kids, they would be responsible for paying it off. So if I had whatever debt I had, and let's say I only had like fifty thousand dollars, and after they paid for everything, and they and I still owed like twenty, they would owe twenty. So wouldn't that's why you you try to get ones that are high enough to cover all of it, so that way. Everything just is, so that way they don't have to worry about it. Uh, one unit of insurance has a face value of $1,000. The annual premium for life insurance usually increases with each new item. Here's your formula today. Annual premium is going to be equal to the number of units. multiplied by the premium per $1,000. Now, just so that you guys know, because this is relatively, we're relatively at the start of the semester, anytime it says per 100, per 1,000 like that, that is kind of a red flag for that's coming from a chart. Okay? So this number right here will come from a chart. So we'll have to look that up. Okay? The person whose name is on the policy chooses a beneficiary. So in my case, my beneficiary is my wife. And this beneficiary will receive the face value of the policy. Face value is the amount of insurance coverage that you buy. Like I said, for me, I have a $250,000 policy. So if something were to happen to me today, then what would happen is after they go through the process, my wife would get $250,000. Okay? That's what it's to help pay for that. Figure 11-2, which, just so you know where 11-2 is, 11-2 is at the top of page 425. It is this part right here. That's the chart we're going to use. Okay? It's a small chart. Small table today. But it shows the premium per $1,000 for a five-year term policy. The rates are lower for females because statistically they have longer life expectancy. Okay? So if you're a male as compared to female, females live longer. Okay? So on number one. It says, an 18-year-old female purchases a $50,000 five-year term policy. What's the annual premium? Now, what that means is, when they say a five-year term, that means that you are getting it for five years. After the five years, you have to either renew that or get a different one. Okay? Now, here's how you figure out how many units. You take the amount of money that the policy is, and you divide it by 1,000. What's 50,000 divided by 1,000? Good. You purchased 50 units. Since you are an 18-year-old female, looking at that chart, you're in the first row, and female is how much per unit? 2.77. So I take 50 times 2.77. How much money? $138.50. That's number one. Number two. A 45-year-old male purchases a $60,000 policy, or a five-year term policy. What's the annual premium? So you take 60,000 divided by 100, or 1,000, I mean. How many units are we purchasing? 60. Then, 45-year-old male, what's the multiplying number for that, according to the chart? Five and 42 cents. Multiply those together, and how much money does it cost? Three twenty-five. 
325 and how many cents? 20. 20. So what I want you to notice between 1 and 2, if you were an 18-year-old buying it, that's $138.50 for the year, okay? Which means you spread that out over the course of how, much, how many times you get paid or monthly or whatever, it's not as bad as you think. Now, is $50,000 a lot? As an 18-year-old, you probably think so, but consider this. If you're 18 and you pass away for whatever reason, typically car crashes in your age, okay? Hopefully that never happens to any of you. But at the same time, it does happen. So if a funeral costs $40,000, then that way that would go towards paying that plus 10000 on whatever else you owe. Some of you guys have your own car now, right? And you pay, make payments on your car. That would pay off that too. Or if you have a credit card, some of you have that. That would pay off that bill too, and all of a sudden the $50,000 is gone. Okay? So just so that you are aware of it. At 45-year-olds, which I'm not yet, by the way, but at 45-year-olds... 60000 is not that much. 60000 would not go towards paying off a whole lot of my debt. Okay? Then, when you get down to the bottom of page 425, now we're going to figure out what happens when it increases. And we're finding the percent increase. First thing that we do at age 40, Julia Johnson purchases a 60000 five-year term policy. So how many units is 60,000? 60. I always divide it by 1,000, and that gives me 60 units. When she was age 40, is Julia a male or female? female. Right. So therefore, at 40, she would have paid $3.47. What is 60 times $3.47? How much? 208.20. Okay. Then, now she's 45. Bless you. So, well, now that she's 45 years old, how much would the multiplying number be? So if I take 60 units, bless you, use you guys, $4.60, how much money would I be now? Even? Yeah, okay. So in five years, her policy went from only being $208.20 up to $276. What they want you to figure out for number three is what's the percent increase. So in order to do that, what you have to do is you have to subtract those two numbers from each other. What is 276 minus 208.20? It increased, oops. It increased $67.80. Now, what you do is, you take the increased amount, or how much it changed, and divide it by the original amount. So what is $67.80? Divided by 208.20. blah, blah, okay. Now remember, it's asking for a percent, which I know Gavin's trying to tell me. But that first number that you get out of there is going to be a decimal, like 0 0.32222222. That's the decimal I want the percent. So when it says percent increase, you need to move your decimal over two spots to the right which is 32.5%. You take the amount you got, the difference, okay, divided by the original. Okay. 
So in five years, it increased 32.5% for her. Okay? Number four, Harold McDonough at age 55 purchases $100,000. So first of all, $100,000 divided by 1,000 is how many units? 100, right. He is now 60 years old. So at 55, how much does it cost per unit? 11.45. So what's 100 times $11.45? 1,145. Okay? Which if you needed a calculator for that, that's fine. But also when you're multiplying by powers of 10, you just move it over how many zeros? So it would be two zeros. So you move it over two spaces to the right. And now... Harold is still at 100 shares or 100 units, but now he's 60. How much does it cost when you're 60? 17, 19. And when I multiply those two numbers together, what do I get? 1,719. So what I want to know is how much did it increase? So it's now 17, 19. It was 1,045 or 145. What's the difference? 574 dollars. That's how much it changed. And what do I divide the change by? The original number, which was 1,145 dollars. I'm going to get a point blah blah blah. Move that two decimal places over. And what's the percent? Bless you. Fifty fifty any decimal point like point five zero. One. So it increased fifty point one percent. Okay? So with the ones like when they want you to find the percent increase, you have to do a Two different premiums, subtract them, and then divide that number by the original amount. Are you okay with that? Okay. So if you turn to page 426, on 5 through 8, part A says the number of units, which up here, if that was, that would have been part A right there where I found it to be 100. Just take how much it was, divide it by 1,000. Then... Part B, annual premium per 1,000, that's the number from the chart. So all you got to do is look at the number in the chart, that chart from the previous page. So for part, column B, if you're Leanna Torres, I'm guessing you're probably female, and your age is at 20, I go to the female column, age 18 to 30, 2.77 should be part B for number 5. Yep. And then you take A times B to give you C. That's what you do for the chart. 9 and 10 is the same as the chart, just in word form. 11 and 12 is like what we did up on the screen, where we found the difference and figured out what percent increase it was. Okay? What do you think? I hope so. So on page 425 to 426, 1 through 12. <clears throat> 